So today we're talking about staff interpreters who work some at national organizations, some at international organizations. And uh, here with Paula. Paula, would um, you tell us a little bit about staff interpreting? For example, to start, have you always worked as a staff interpreter? Oh no, certainement pas. <laughs> non, euh, j'ai quand je me suis euh, j'ai obtenu mon diplôme, j'ai décidé de faire autre chose. Je me trouvais un petit peu trop jeune pour commencer à travailler comme interprète et donc j'ai travaillé d'abord dans des organisations de jeunesse où j'étais toujours parallèlement à ce que je faisais, j'étais toujours interprète, on a toujours profité de moi en mm -hmm. tant qu'interprète. Puis j'étais assistante parlementaire et puis après toutes ces années-là, j'ai décidé de revenir à l'interprétation et j'ai d'abord été freelance ici à Bruxelles pendant plusieurs années, ça marchait très très bien et puis à un moment donné, voilà, l'occasion s'est présentée de rentrer. Oh well, I certainly have not always worked as a staff interpreter. In fact, many years ago when I started working in interpretation, I had decided that I didn't want to be a staff interpreter. I did other things too. I was in teaching, broadcasting, mm. tourism, and I started off interpreting um, in Jamaica, actually, in the Caribbean. And in those days, I used to say, I don't want a, an office job. I don't want to work with only one organization. But then things changed. As they say, never say never. Things changed, and I'm now a staff interpreter. And what about the differences between the two? Yeah, now, you said you came quite late into mm. the staff side. You probably have memories of the freelance side. Sure. What are one or two of the differences that you most notice? I think uh, one of the main differences is that as a freelance interpreter, although there are lots of disadvantages because there's a lack of security, uh, there's a huge advantage in that you're, you can manage your own time, um, theoretically at any rate. Right, yeah. Uh, and if you don't want to accept a, a contract, you can refuse it. Uh, you can take a week off without providing justification. Uh, so you have much more freedom in terms of time management. As a staff interpreter, uh, you have an obligation to your organization. And even if you're not actually in the booth that day, uh, you still have to be on standby. So mm -hmm. it's you know, a full-time job uh, every single day, uh, unless you negotiate leave. So you have that obligation to your organization. Within that, in the job that you do, what does a professional association add to your life as a staff interpreter? Pour moi, laïque, c'est du réseautage. C'est le fait de se mettre en réseau avec d'autres collègues. Et ça, c'est important pour moi, tant en tant que freelance, ne fût-ce que pour connaître, bien sûr, d'autres collègues, mais aussi pour mieux s'organiser, pour mieux savoir ce qu'il faut faire, ce qu'il ne faut pas faire, ce qu'on peut demander, ce qu'on ne peut pas demander. Et donc, pour moi, c'était important de rester en contact avec, par exemple, les collègues des autres organisations internationales, par le biais de la Commission des permanents, par exemple, pour savoir ce qui se fait ailleurs et ce qui ne se fait pas. Well, I think staff interpreters are interpreters like other interpreters. They're part of a profession. Uh, and in purely practical terms, uh, their working conditions are actually based on the principles and the quality standards that were defined by AIC way back right from the beginning of the professional association. Um, staff interpreters usually enjoy very good conditions. Uh, they can't work alone in the booth. They have a maximum number of sessions. Uh, they're supposed to get documents in advance. All of that was defined by the professional association. And they benefit from those conditions every day. Now, you may say, well, that's now established and they don't need to worry. Um, in today's budgetary climate, that is actually not true. And their conditions could well come under query, if not attack. And it's very helpful for the head interpreter mm -hmm. and the staff interpreters to be able to refer to a body of expertise and experience that uh, AIC has. So I do think it's very important for staff interpreters to be members of a professional association. I think it's very important to give recognition to our profession because um, the co profession of conference interpreting is still relatively yeah. new and it is not yet recognized in all countries throughout the world. And I think we have a duty, all of us, both freelancers and staff, mm -hmm. to continue upholding our profession and contributing to our association so that our profession can become fully recognized everywhere, both within and outside of the organizations.